best thing about being a truly authentic person is that when somebody doesn't like you, they really actually don't like the true you. My name is Sylvia Mordini and I'm the founder of Life Inspired. Being authentic and having somebody not like you is way preferred than having somebody like you for some sort of pretend version of yourself some version of yourself that you've over edited just to people please and help them want to like you. But if somebody doesn't like you and you are being authentic, then so be it. So three qualities of what it means to be authentic that are really standing out to me. But first let's define authentic. I think we often think that we know what it is, but but really, what is it? Well, congruence between our values, our beliefs, and our actions. So another way said, when what we think, what we do, what we feel are all in alignment, then we are showing up as our most authentic selves. Or this concept of there exists the true self. And whether you're thinking of it from a psychological standpoint or a spiritual standpoint, that, that both use that same terminology, the true self. And in fact, when we're looking at the definition of authenticity, one of the key ways to define being authentic is to be genuine, to not be false. And to not be a copy of anyone else, but to simply just be yourself. And that is number one as an aspect characteristic of how to show up authentically is to be true to yourself, whatever that may be. It's very easy to make the opinions of other people more important than the opinion that we have of ourselves. It's easy to self-abandon or prioritize what they think or want or believe us to be so that we become almost amnesiacs and we lose trust in ourselves and knowing our own realities and understanding who we really are. Because once you become accustomed to be in the state of pretending, and ricocheting to be what everybody else wants you to be, it's very easy to literally forget in this sort of spiritual amnesia way who you really are and what it means to be true to yourself. So conceptually, I think we get it, right? But if you've lost practice or you've continuously edited the version of yourself or who you are is situational. Who you are with your parents is this person. Who you are at work is this person. Who you are with your friends is this other version of you. Then it can feel almost schizophrenic then. Like who is the real true self? And so it takes some excavating to remove all that is not you. It's like that beautiful story about Michelangelo when asked like, how is it that he could create this beauty like the Pietà and these beautiful sculptures? And he said, he didn't. All he did was remove all that was not the beauty within. And simply excavated, remove the excess. And so on our way to being our true self, so that we show up authentically, it's so much part of that is to excavate and to remove all the things that aren't us, but are these little agreements we've made for other people or these stories that we've picked up or societal conditioning. But today's an opportunity to let that go. And then the second part of how to show up authentically is to think inwardly, to spend time in introspection contemplation and really tap into what do you feel? What do you believe? What do you know? And what do you not know? 
but to make the time to go in. With the advent of social media, it's so easy to first thing in the morning, turn on the phone, find your favorite app, and then just start scrolling and checking in to see what everybody else is doing. And 20 minutes can go by just like that. And what happens is that it's immediately taken us outward. And then comparison sets in. So if the very first thing you do in your morning is stoke comparison by seeing what everybody else is doing, you've already polluted and created some chaos and, um, in your mind and a whole lot of noise rather than avoid doing that, especially first thing in the morning. And really balance your social media diet and, and lower the intake when possible and focus on what you believe without constantly seeking out others' opinions. Just be with what you think you know and what you know and journal, meditate, mindfulness practices of introspection. And then that tapping in to your own inner resources is what allows you to then express yourself out. So often we'll, I'll talk about this as the work of the sixth chakra, the third eye, and the throat chakra. When you bow your head to your heart in self-reflection, and then you lift your head in self-expression from the throat chakra, self-reflection leads to self-expression. Self-reflection leads to self-expression. And then finally, the third thing is to live in the present moment. To show up authentically means that you're not over concerned about replaying a version of yourself from the past or worried that that version is outdated or doesn't meet today's standards or you would have done things differently in the past or all the stories that we can associate with the past version of ourselves. And it also doesn't equally mean thinking that, oh, you could just be yourself if you do one, two, three, if you do like these three things or 10 things, then finally you could be yourself somewhere in the future. So whether it's looking backwards or looking forwards, when we're practicing living authentic lives, we are in the present moment. This, exactly as you are, exactly what you're feeling, what you're thinking, how you're showing up, unedited. This is what it means to be authentic. And it always takes place in the present moment. And I want you to think about the people that you would point out in your life or in social media that you're like, wow, that's an authentic person. That person is really showing up as themselves, their true self. And notice how present that person is, how laser-like and present they are. And you'll see, like it is a common characteristics of those that are living authentically. As themselves. So when we live authentically and someone doesn't like us, they really don't like us. They don't like who we are and that's okay. It is far better at that than somebody like us for some made up version that isn't really us. So thank goodness that that's the outcome. So people can decide how they want to be in relationship with the true you. And when you show up authentically, there's a groundedness, a feeling of stability that puts people at ease. It feels safe to be around authentic people because by them being authentic, it feels like we then have our own permission to be who we truly are. I thank you so much for um, stopping by today and being inspired. 
If you have been inspired, please subscribe below and uh, I can't wait to hear your comments and to learn how you've applied this or what your challenges are in living an authentic life. In the meantime, from my heart to your heart, to the heart of the universe, may you love yourself, love your day, and love your life.